Over the years of pen testing, doing CTFs, and generally working in the field of cybersecurity, I've tried and tested some awesome and some terrible tools. In this video, I'm going to share with you my opinion on where the most popular port scanners rank. We'll also consider the pros and cons of each one so that you can choose the right tool for the right job, or at the very least, give you some idea about what other tools are available for you to try. As cyber threats grow, so does the need for skilled professionals. TCM security certifications are here to elevate your skills to meet these challenges. Our courses are tailored to give you an edge with practical scenario-based exams. Step into the world of advanced cybersecurity at certifications.tcm-sec.com and make your mark. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there is a port scanner that we've missed out that you like to use, then let us know down in the comments below. Let's dive in. So first up, I've thrown together a little page with some vanilla JavaScript and Bootstrap so that we can rank our scanners accordingly. And we're going to start with Unicorn Scan. And unlike a few traditional scanners, it's asynchronous. To explain this a little bit more, synchronous or connection-oriented scanners like our good friend Nmap wait for the host response to determine if the port is alive. On the other hand, asynchronous or connectionless scanners like Unicorn Scan do not wait for the host response, as they create separate threads for each port. This means we reach much higher scanning speeds in larger networks or environments, but there's a caveat here. Dropped packets during asynchronous scans won't be picked up, so it's likely our results will be a little less accurate. When we compare the features like OS fingerprinting to Nmap, they exist, but they are not as extensive or as advanced. We do, however, get some cool features like custom payloads, though I've not used this particular feature myself, and being able to use PCAP logging so that you can go ahead and analyze the scans later on if you want to. Personally, I tend to avoid PCAPs like the plague, but I'm sure some of you out there would find this extremely helpful. Overall, asynchronous scanning with custom payloads makes it a pretty powerful scanner. So I'm thinking A tier. A tier is pretty good, I think. Let's start with that. Next up, we have mass scan, something that I actually regularly use to scan networks before feeding the results into Nmap for further analysis. And spoiler alert, one of our scanners later on does this automatically, so maybe it's time for me to switch up my methodology as well. Its main pro is the claim that it's the fastest internet port scanner and can scan the entire internet in under six minutes. Now, I've not tested this, but there seems to be a lot of articles claiming this, so maybe somebody's done some fact checking. Who knows? That itself is an impressive claim, but in terms of finding further information about open ports, it's kind of limited to basic banner grabbing. Another issue is the potential for network disruption. So if you crank up the rate, you can break things. And that's something that all pen testers do at some point in their career and something that we all learn from. But also, if you need to do UDP scans and you want them to finish before you retire at the age of 65, then mass scan is very helpful. The UDP scanning is way faster than other scanners. When running mass scan, the CPU utilization is also pretty small and it really makes for a good initial recon tool, like we said before, in large environments. Tricky to place since it essentially does one thing, although it does that thing really, really well, but more often than not, other asynchronous scanners can do a similar job, but also have a lot more features. So I'm gonna put mass scan, let's say B tier. I think B tier is fair. The Angry IP scanner is not something I'd used before I started researching scanners for this video, but it looked stable and widely talked about enough to include. The scanning is multi-threaded, and this isn't quite the same thing as asynchronous, by the way. And this question sometimes comes up in technical interviews, so Google the difference between asynchronous and multi-threaded if you want to find out more. But it's pretty stable and portable and extensible with plugins. It's pretty straightforward to use, but when I was testing it, I did find that it was a little bit limited and I couldn't really go beyond basic scanning without switching to things like Nmap. I suspect the target audience here is more for sysadmins rather than pen testers, which is by no means a bad thing, but our requirements are sometimes a little bit different. 
And finally, depending on how you feel about Java, this might bump or drop it a grade. So for me, it's fairly solid, but I'm looking at it from more of a pen testing perspective. So I'm going to put this one down in C tier. B, D, no, C tier I think is fair. Yeah, let's leave it there. So I knew we'd get to Nmap at some point, and I was wondering how I'm going to approach this, especially since it's pretty much the de facto standard when it comes to port scanning. And I realized that throughout this video, I've been comparing other scanners to it. Nmap is a powerful and flexible tool and can easily be picked up with basic flags, but also has a lot of advanced features, including a scripting engine and other use cases, which may take some time to get acquainted with. It is a nice balance between speed and analysis and it's so widely adopted that is it A tier? Is it S tier? Hmm, this is a tricky decision. S? No, I'm going to put it in A tier. I think A tier is fair. I reserve the right to upgrade it later on though, if nothing else kind of drops into the S tier grade. So next up, we have the GUI of Nmap, which is Zenmap. And I know a few people have the gut reaction that's like, hey, you're not a hacker if you leave the terminal. But realistically, creating something like a network diagram from scans and looking at changes over time, a GUI is what you need. The downside to Zenmap is that it's a little bit more awkward to set up more complex scans. And if you want to include scanning in a script, for example, then command line is going to be much easier to work with. I feel like this is more of just a shout out to Zenmap in general rather than a comparison. But I think because it's probably not that often used, although it is quite useful sometimes, maybe it's B tier or C tier. I'm going to put it in C tier for now. Once again, I might upgrade it later on. We'll see. All right, next up we have maybe the most exciting one in our list, and that's a relatively new contender, which is Rust Scan. And this has been rapidly gaining popularity for its speed, efficiency, and also integration with Nmap. Now, previously I've run MassScan and then piped the results to Nmap to do further analysis, but RustScan actually does this for us, combining the best of both worlds for speed and in-depth analysis. It's pretty simple to use and it does its job really, really well. It's perfect for larger networks where speed is important, but you don't want to compromise yourself by missing out important information from those findings. So for detailed analysis and a broader range of scanning capabilities, Nmap does remain the more versatile tool, but RustScan complements Nmap rather than replacing it, offering a more efficient way to handle the initial scanning phase. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to give this a fair go and put it in D tier. No, I'm joking. RustScan I think is a S tier scanner because it's modern and it solves some problems that we've had and builds on things that we've learned from the past. So. Yeah, I think Ruskan, definitely it's fair to put it up there. All right, so our final contender on the list, and we have Netcat, which is often described as a Swiss army knife. But I'm going to throw out there that for scanning, it's the wrong tool for the job. Yes, it's possible. And yes, it's useful for banner grabbing and catching shells and interacting with services. But as a port scanner, I can't really think of a good reason or situation where you would choose Netcat over a scanning specific tool. So unfortunately, in this category, Netcat, you're going into D tier and that doesn't mean it's a bad tool. Like I say, for port scanning, it's probably not the right tool for the job. Don't hate me too much if you're a Netcat fan. Now, before we wrap up, we do have some honorary mentions to give out that didn't make the list today. So sorry, Superscan, Advanced IP Scanner, Fping, and ScanRand. Maybe next time they'll make the cut. And of course, if you do have questions, feel free to drop into one of our live streams, which happens every Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll do our best to answer them. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And once again, if we missed out a tool that you want to share with the community, let us know in the comments below. Catch you next time.